importing DWGs. Importing DWGs is actually quite interesting and um, we have two ways to do it. First one is to import only the graphics and place the graphics. You usually know that it's pretty much like placing a block. Or you can actually import here a DXF DWG. You pick the DXF DWG that you want. You say you want to overwrite, let's say, page one here. And you can now evaluate if you want or not some sort of a um, scaling. I usually do not scale first and I import. That's the first try. And you get basically the page here. And you can see that the page is not bad. And if we compare the symbols that actually came in, the symbols are very similar in size to the symbols that we typically would use. Like here, let's say we have a selector switch here, very similar to the, the one. And you can see that, yeah, I could actually use those ones. And you can even see that the text, if I actually type in SSX, uh, some sort of a number, that we're looking at pretty much the same size. So I think we have the right template, number one and we have the right symbols to actually use this. As you can see, we do have here a plot frame. Now this plot frame, so basically we're looking at this graphic here that we can see, so except the graphics that is inside, could actually be used for our plot frame. And when we look at it, we have a special aspect of two ladders and, I don't know, 22 different lines starting at 0, 0 going to 21. So technically what I'm gonna do to create a plot frame that actually is a smart plot frame in ePlan, I will go here to Master Data, Plot Frame, copy the closest plot frame that actually makes sense. In this case here, it's a two ladder plot frame and I'll name it uh, here, just copy or whatever. And there is my original plot frame from ePlan now copied. I will paste the data that I have imported from the DXF DWG. So technically this data here, I will copy it and I will flip over here and simply paste it. Now the pasting, of course, um, if you don't have a reference point or anything like that, you can place it exactly in the same spot or you can decide what to do. I mean, that's, that's up to you. Here you can see I'm just placing it there. I unfortunately did not pick all the lines so uh, maybe this line here, I have to stretch it, or I may have to add a uh, line right from the top corner here down to the bottom corner here to make it nice and straight. There we go, but we have our plot frame. Now the next question is, of course, everything that is here, part of the original plot frame, of course, will no longer be part of the new plot frame, right? You will have here a special text, uh, for instance, like this text here, you will actually read the uh, size of this text and you will actually think and try to evaluate what is the best uh, ePlan property to replace that text. Now, this is a page number. So the page number would actually be here the page counter. So technically, if you look at this here, this is now middle centered and that's the size. I will actually do the same format, middle center and same format. Right? I could, of course, use the basic center, but I'm going to use middle center, exactly the same thing. And then when you move this object, you come and use here the auto snap to actually place it right on top of the original text. And then you can simply pick the original text and delete it. Now we can see here that we have some um, uh, lines there that we have to place. There's one there that we missed out. It's just a matter of us uh, not having copied it uh, as we should have, and that's about it, you know, it's not uh, a bigger issue than that. So here we can easily just final finish it up. And now we have to think about the rest of the uh, pages. The job number, we have a job number, and obviously we have a drawing title, and we have a drawing number. I'm assuming that the job number is a project property, so we actually do have the drawing number, as a page property and we have a job number so basically if we take any of the red properties here the red ones are actually project properties we can go and look for the job number which is one okay and as before we will basically match the size here of the text and 
also the alignment of the text on the job number. So here, like this, it's basis left, perfect, and then we move it. And when we move it, we actually use there the snap point to actually place it right on top of the other one. And then we can delete this one. So we have the job number done. The drawing number is actually down here. We can see that they obviously have used the drawing number. This line is our line. It shouldn't be there. So the drawing number, same size. Again, so double click, go here, boop. And in this case, they seem to have a basis center. I'm not 200% sure, but it looks like this, right? Basis center. So when we actually move, we can use the letter V for move. M is being used for macros. V can be used here. So the window seal, I'm not too sure. This is probably some sort of a <coughs> project description or something like that. So technically, again, we could uh, use a uh, property from the project. Basis center. And we can actually choose choose which property could be best. It could be the project description. Uh, so if we go down here, you will see at one point in time, you will find the project description. You will find uh, some user supplementary fields if you're not too sure which one to use. Those ones can be renamed. Uh, you can pin directly a specific one like the... Uh, here we are on the project. Let's go down to P for project, and we have the project description, which is a one-time deal that we could actually uh, place on top. So if we move it again, we just place it, whoops, uh, move it, move it there, erase this one. So you go on and on like this and make every single property that may, might be smart, you make it smart, and when you're finished, all you do is you get rid of the original uh, data from the original plot frame and you just keep what you want. Now we have to look at the aspect of the size of the page and the plot frame path. So if you here we go to view path we can see that the original plot frame was slightly too big but this is easy to calculate now. We can actually say let's go here to uh, this. This is a total of 15.4 inches so we know that the width of that um, column that we have is column width is not 15.4 divided by 2, which is basically uh, 7.5, that's 15, right? 7.7, <coughs> 15.4. And you can see we're already adjusted. Now the other adjustment we have to do is we have seen in the previous drawing that we had 22 lines. So if I go at 22 lines, um, first of all, I'll go down here to 22 lines. That's the first thing. And it goes down, but it goes too far down. So I have to first, 22 is good. That's the number of rows we have. We have to consider a row, a grid offset down at the bottom here, which is probably two inches to start here at this uh, corner. And now we have to consider 22. <coughs> In this 22, we most likely have a larger one at the top and a larger one at the bottom, which is usually the case, right? Which is already getting closer. But the distance that I need to cover up overall has to be adjusted a little bit. And the best way is to go back to your original one here and check out what the distance is between these two row numbers. And you can see that suddenly in a matter of inches, if I actually display an inch, you can see it's 0 0.37. So ideally, I should actually make these ones 0 0.037 for row number two, down to 21. Okay, now when we look at it, you can see that we are stretching over a little bit too much at the top. So what I can do is I can just simply take the last one down at the bottom here to 22, make it maybe a little bit smaller, right? Instead of one inch, maybe keep it 0.75, which is good too. 
and this now covers my whole uh, area and this is actually the idea the only thing remaining now is to reposition the row numbers these are the row numbers right and you may want them dead centered the easiest way to do this is just simply by saying I want this middle right like this and they will be right in the center of your uh, row so now just move it over a little bit to the left so that you can actually see them like that right hitting the X button will ensure that you do it nice and straight. Uh, the top one, you may want to move it down. So V, X, move it down a little bit like this. Make it nice and straight. Same thing for the two bottom ones here. And this is basically anywhere you place this row number text inside this area you see here will display the row 22, whichever row actually shows up. This here is an interesting concept. Previous page, next page. It wasn't used by the uh, previous user, but I'm going to use it there. And as you can see, wherever this is fixed text, this is fixed text, but I can always come back. The very last thing to do is to check out when you have a line row like this, where ex exactly the ending point is, and that will explain what exactly is the size of that um, a plot frame. So the plot frame is 15.4, 11.5, let's say. So here, if we go to the properties, you can see here 15. Point, let's say 5, 11.8, and this will help you actually create a very nice plot frame that really covers the whole page. There you go, and it's done. Now going back to the ePlan uh, pages, remember from the beginning, all you have to do now open a single page like this, double click and change, go and get the plot frame that you just created and bingo you got your plot frame. If you take off the view path, you get the plot frame. As you can see the plot frame we omitted like a few graphics here. These graphics were actually copied over and you just have to reopen the plot frame and delete of course that text that you want and the small dip switches save it and it will be saved you got your plot frame and it's fully functional if you actually place a symbol on a specific line in this particular case you'll see it it actually picks up that line number right away as it is written there so it's perfect we got our plot frame